Hello, everybody. Welcome to the last new content of the course. And the topic here today is it's all happening all the time. And what do I mean by that? Well, I mean, remember, our big ideas in this course are the energy and entropy balances, uh, and then the systems where you apply those all the time, like especially engines and uh, fridges, anything else that's a cycle. So that's one really big idea. Our second idea is fluid properties. Uh, and that's got a focus on vapor liquid equilibrium, but it's also got water activity and osmotic pressure hanging out in it. Um, it's got lower flammability limit hanging out in it. Um, heck, it's even got um, equations of state hanging out in it. All of those things all together, fluid properties. And then our last big idea is uh, reaction equilibrium. Now, uh, a bunch of you have also probably noticed that when we talk about reaction equilibrium, um, it's just about how much product we expect when this reaches equilibrium. And sometimes we expect all the reactants to go as far as possible into turning into products, but sometimes we don't expect that. Um, you may be wondering how fast that ought to happen. That's not our problem. That is, however, your problem next semester how fast is about kinetics and reactor design and that is the name of a course you're taking next semester what a surprise just like when you would ask a question for how fast for heat transfer or energy transfer that turned out to be a problem for your heat transfer course and when you wanted to ask how fast about the behavior of a fluid um, that's kind of a mix of uh, separations and UO so we have all these things coming together. And I just want to point out to you that even though we sort of looked at these as though they were kind of three consecutive things, they're all happening all the time, all together. And I just want to look quickly at a little example of that. So this here is my drawing of a jet engine. And that's a cycle we didn't particularly cover, but you could go talk to your friends in Mekki if you want to get more detail. It's any engine cycle is a thing you are now equipped to do because you understand energy and entropy balances. Um, but I, I like this as an example here right now because it's got all three of our big ideas kind of happening in rapid succession, even though that's, that's true. Actually, in a lot of places, we could find this in a refrigerator too. But I thought, heck, Let's, uh, let's pretend it was possible for us to actually travel somewhere and think about a jet engine. So how a jet engine works is it starts with a big kind of fan up front whose job is to compress air, right? Air comes kind of wandering in from the outside and it's at not a, a high pressure. We want it to be high pressure. So it runs through this compressor. And so the air runs through that compressor and gets smooshed really small. So imagine it's kind of going, uh, and it goes through more than one set of rotors, but I'm only going to draw one because drawing rotors is a pain in the butt. So just pretend I've drawn one. Then we mix some jet fuel in it. Uh, you know, jet fuel, you can go look up what jet fuel is. It's, uh, it's a hydrocarbon product like gasoline, super duper flammable. And it is introduced in a, as a very, very fine mist, so it is going to be very easy to burn. And in fact, then there is a, uh, I believe there's a spark plug in this, something like that. There is a source of ignition, and that goes up, boom. Um, so then we have, you know, the burning fuel, and the burning fuel, then the combustion products go speeding out the back end of the jet engine. As they go speeding out of the back end of the jet engine, they pass through a turbine, and the turbine's main job actually is to rotate uh, this element that connects it back up to the compressor. So this turbine actually runs the compressor that's sitting there in front of it. Runs some other stuff too. But then this hot gas flowing uh, out the back of the jet engine 
is what then pushes our jet forward, right? Thank you, Mr. Newton, Dr. Newton. Uh, the jet goes forward because the gas goes backwards. And as you know, since this is combustion, uh, we have CO2 in water. And so eventually, um, this water uh, and CO2, which are uh, initially very hot gases, now are up in the upper atmosphere and cool off. So where do we see the elements of the class lurking here? Well, we have a, a compressor and a turbine. And in fact, this does constitute a cycle. So we see energy balance. We see entropy balance. We see a cycle right there. Boom, happening in a connected way all together. Then here in the middle, I just said, things were burning. Oh my gosh, that is a reaction. And then out here on the back end with the CO2 and the water, while this doesn't happen like immediately, and when I say immediately, I mean like right here at the back side, although that would be kind of bad if we did, this, um, this mixture may eventually have a phase change and the water certainly does. And you know this because when you see a jet flying by overhead and you go and look up, um, there's this little cloud that's coming out from behind the plane, right? You've seen that. There goes the plane. And then there's this little contrail of uh, condensation that's coming out behind it. And that is because that water is starting to condense into droplets. So we have out over here, we have some fluid properties we got to worry about. And part of my point is that these all end up connected. If we had uh, the water emerging somehow inside the turbine as water droplets and it hadn't been designed for that, you know those water droplets would go tearing through the turbine blades and that would be a very bad scene. So we don't want that to happen. Um, unless we have specifically designed for it. So we've got to be checking on vapor liquid equilibrium while at the same time worrying about the reaction, while at the same time worrying about the energy and entropy balance. So we can write a series of equations that are all linked because uh, what's important for vapor liquid equilibrium? Well, uh, vapor liquid equilibrium, quite a lot of time we phrase things in terms of fugacities or activities. Same difference. Um, and what controls if a reaction happens? Fugacities or activities? Same difference. And then uh, when we have this energy balance on this overall uh, system, you will recall in the energy balance and the entropy balance, we're thinking about, uh, for example, enthalpy. And to compute that enthalpy, we either need to know that we can treat what we're working with as an ideal gas or that we can't. And, and uh, well, if we're using activity and fugacity over here, we are modeling it in some way, probably because it's not ideal. Probably can't get away with ideal gas given how much we're compressing the air here. And so the way we calculate this enthalpy must indeed reflect the uh, a, an appropriate model to capture the non-idealities at high compression and high temperature when it hits the, com uh, the combustion chamber. So uh, what we're calculating here is intimately linked to those activities and fugacities, which and then impacts what we have out there. And these things just all um, have to be in sync with each other. And if we want to look at this system overall as a whole, we'll have to solve all of these equations at once. Now, quite often we are able to simplify and say something like, well, look, I'm just gonna look at the compressor. I am just gonna look right here at this reaction. I am just, mm, works a little less well. I am just gonna look at the turbine. Uh, but there comes a time when we gotta take it all at once to get the big picture. And that means we are going to have to solve these in a linked way. Fortunately for us, we can do some back of the envelope calculations that give us an overall idea of what's going on. We could do those by hand, but really when we want to do detailed calculations on this, uh, accounting for all of these elements simultaneously, we are going to use a computer because the solutions 
are iterative. We don't know what temperature this is until we know what's happening with the reaction. But what happens with the reaction changes depending on what temperature it is. And can we consider this adiabatic, in which case the temperature is shifting, or uh, is it constant temperature? Hint, it's probably closer to adiabatic. Therefore, um, we're going to have to do a calculation at a certain temperature, check the energy balance, see if it all works out, and if it doesn't, then we try a different temperature and go again, and we iterate in loopy, 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 loopy fashion over and over again until we get this to converge. This is what computers were born to do, uh, so we will use them extensively for this sort of thing. Now, you probably, unless uh, you go work for certain companies, you probably won't end up designing jet engines, but you'll de design chemical plants, and chemical plants will indeed have all of these functions going on at once. And so you'll use something like HiSys, and you'll get to practice this next semester too, you'll use something like HiSys to uh, help with that iteration because that uh, because the vapor liquid equilibrium is happening at the same time as the reaction equilibrium, which is happening at the same time as energy is being transferred. Uh, so it's beautiful. It's great. This shows up everywhere. And um, I hope this class has helped you see a little of that. We're going to celebrate uh, on Friday by watching everybody's videos and reading everybody's tweets. And then we'll have my summation and wrap up on Monday. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing what you all do with the final. Uh, but in the meantime, the big picture uh, is a little intimidating, but you now have the tools to be able to work on it. And that's very cool.